here to talk about Black Butler. Um, the latest volume just came out. This is volume 32. This is a long-running manga series, <clears throat> and we'll talk about this specific volume in a moment, but I wanted to first give you some background on the series if you're unfamiliar with it. Now, I first came to Black Butler from the anime, <clears throat> Kuroshitsuji. It's a little bit of a tongue twister, um, is the Japanese title of this series. And it basically is set in Victorian England, a 12-year-old Earl, um, last name of Phantom Hive, which is such a weird name, but okay. <laughs> he works for Queen Victoria as the Queen's watchdog. Um, digging out underground um, evils, usually involving the aristocracy doing something they shouldn't be doing. Uh, the series begins very episodically. Um, Phantom Hive has a butler, the titular black butler, his name is Sebastian, um, and he seems to have supernatural, superhuman powers, and as the story goes on, you understand how and why that is, and why Earl Phantom Hive's entire staff, of which there's like four for his whole massive estate, um, is a little bit strange. He has a housekeeper who doesn't seem to know how to keep house. He has a gardener with excessive strength who's just cheerful and happy to be outside. And he has a, um, a, a cook, a chef, who can't actually cook very well, which is all fine because Sebastian will take care of it. Um, it's all about keeping up appearances and these house staff uh, members have other more important jobs on the sly. The series is pretty dark. Um, it has moments that walk the line of boys love yaoi but don't quite tip over to that. Uh, I think I read once that the author Yana Toposo wanted to do a, a yaoi, and then it got kind of pulled back a little bit from that. Um, and like, like I said, the series starts pretty episodically. Um, there'll be a storyline of a few chapters because the story, I think, originally runs in a in a monthly magazine in Japan, um, and then you know it gets resolved. They're on the hunt for whatever thing Queen Victoria has told them to figure out and they go figure that out and then put a neat bow on that and move on. But as the series has gone on, as I said, this is volume number 32 and at this point we're not getting volumes very frequently, um, one or two a year if we're lucky. <laughs> uh, so I don't know why the slowdown, I don't know if that's I, this says that this was originally um, published in Japan in 2022 and we're getting it in 2023. So that lag doesn't seem to be very long. <clears throat> so maybe it's more like not as frequently. I, well, when you consider several chapters, how many chapters are in this? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So ten months worth of content if each one of these little chapters comes out once a month in Japan, I guess. Um, in any case, as the series goes on, we get more of a through line. Um, we discover um, deeper rot within the <laughs> aristocracy to be dug out. Some personal stuff for Earl Phantom Hive. Remember, he's 12. Um, gets brought to the fore and you know he has a lot of like personal issues to deal with and um and it all gets kind of blended together i'm being specifically very like vague because i don't want to spoil it for anybody who might want to pick it up um it's pretty entertaining uh i've enjoyed it up until recently the last few volumes I didn't love because they're kind of, first of all, because they're so infrequent, 
I pick up the newest one and I go, I don't even remember where I was. <laughs> where is the story again? I don't remember. Um, there's a lot of characters to keep track of. There's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've, I've started losing some of the threads because of it and because of the lack of frequency of being able to, you know, read it, like the lack of frequency of the volumes being released. I suppose I could go find the Japanese and translate it, which is what I used to do for a lot of manga that I enjoyed. Um, I, just, I don't know. I don't feel I don't feel motivated to do that with this. But in any case, uh, this volume carries on the current somewhat muddled um, storyline, but not really. Uh, so it focuses on the cook at the manor. His name is Baldroy, or Baldo for short, and it's largely, most of this volume is flashback on how he got recruited to work for the Phantom Hive, um, fam well, family, there's only one, Earl Phantom Hive, and, uh, you know, why he does what he does and how he became what he is. I'm, again, being vague because I don't want to spoil it if you want to read it. I actually really liked this volume more than recent ones because um, the current storyline for me just feels like it's kind of dragging out and you know I get that it's it's ambitious. There's you know uh, basically each of the servants has been sent on a mission and we're following each one as they complete their mission towards a an ultimate like goal right an end game and that's cool um but uh <laughs> i don't know i'm just like can we just get to the part where it's done i don't know i i, I guess i'm just not as wowed with this as it does i guess because it doesn't feel as concise and you know it feels a little bit like the author maybe doesn't entirely have it planned out. I could be wrong. I could be very wrong, but it doesn't feel very planned. Um, you can always tell when an author has written a concise story arc from start to finish and, you know, they kind of know where they're going. Um, and then sometimes it feels like they just kind of started writing and they're feeling it out. And um, I can't, I'm one to talk because I do tend to plot as I go but then go back and you know tidy it up and it's different with an ongoing series obviously than if I'm writing a novel and I can write out a draft and then edit it and fix it and this is something that's ongoing and you have to be consistent and you know and have all this stuff but anyway all that to say I actually enjoyed getting Baldo's story in this I know a lot of people were like oh this was just filler it was all flashback there's like very, at the very end, there's a very little bit about the current mission that Baldo is on um, that sets up the next volume, I assume, the next part of the series. Uh, it, you, you have to wonder, though, how long is this going to go on? I mean, again, we're at 32, and it's just spinning and spinning out. And honestly, I kind of just miss... So, you know, we're not seeing as much Sebastian in the past few volumes or um, Phantom Hive in the past few vol volumes because we've been following all of the servants on their missions. And the, the fun for me is Sebastian and Phantom Hive. I enjoy their dynamic. And so I, as much as I can enjoy the side characters to an extent, um, you know, I don't know. In any case, this was good because in the flashbacks, obviously Sebastian's very much there. We do see the Earl a little bit, but not a lot. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I gave it like a 4.5 stars. The series as a whole probably started out really high for me and is declining a little bit as long running series can do. I mean, it's hard to sustain and maintain a high level. Um, <laughs> the longer you go on, with something uh, but you know I'd say overall this is like for me as a series three three and a half star series um, and we'll see where it ends when it ends if it ends if I ever like 
I don't know, um, give up on it before it ends. I don't, I, I don't know. After 32 volumes, I think I'm in it for the long haul, but, uh, we'll see. Um, but yeah, that is Black Butler volume 32. Let's see all of my Black Butlers over here above my bookcase or above my desk on a little shelf here um because I ran out of room in my manga shelf for all of it so I found someplace else to put it because there's a lot of it uh there's more of it than pretty much any other manga I own um I don't know maybe they'll make uh, those big omnibuses at some point but I think now I'm just now that I have all of these I'm just gonna keep having these <laughs> in any case if you've read Black Butler Kuro Shitsuji, um, or watched the anime, let me know your thoughts. If you haven't, let me know if it interests you, if it's the kind of thing you'd want to read. Um, it does get dark, it does have some horrific elements, um, but I'm pretty sensitive to horror and this doesn't bother me. Uh, so the level of graphicness in the, um, in the, you know, images is not, for me, a problem. The level of, like, horror doesn't really yeah it's not bad for me uh I think I, it's considered shonen um but I would say you know like it's a 13 and up kind of thing I mean my kids watched the anime with me yeah yeah so 13 and up I would say if you're wondering that's just my personal like opinion on like a, an age range obviously every reader is different some readers are more precocious than others um so use your best judgment if you have kids who want to read it you might want to take a look at it first but anyway yeah and i'll see you next time i read something <laughs> if i ever read anything again and until then take care